Last time, I showed you how to successfully calibrate your autoguider. In this video, I'm going to show you how to start an autoguided session and what successful autoguiding should look like. We begin with a full frame exposure from the guider camera of 4 seconds. This is long enough to provide us with more than a few stars to choose from and to smooth out the effects of seeing. I recommend picking your own guide star. On a noisy guide camera without a shutter for taking auto darks, hot pixels may be a problem, and this problem is trivial to get around by simply handpicking a good candidate guide star yourself. Make sure you do not pick a guide star that is too bright and saturated. Here I've located a good candidate, and I'll draw a subframe around it and take another exposure to inspect the field and double check for saturated pixels. This looks like a good candidate guide star, and I'll select this star for auto guiding by double clicking it and then pressing the auto guide button. When guiding, a small subframe will be automatically placed around the guide star. It may not be too pretty, especially if you're using an 8-bit guide camera, but you can adjust the appearance of the star to your own taste with the histogram tool. The display of the guide star does not affect guiding accuracy. This is purely a cosmetic tweak. To really evaluate how effective your guiding is, you need to display the graphs dialog. This shows four important metrics for guiding quality. First is a 3D display of your guide star intensity. A scatter graph shows 2D corrections in real time, and a nice tight gathering around the center is ideal. Relative intensity is shown by the green bar, and finally, a log of the X and Y corrections is shown to further monitor the stability of your guiding over time in each individual axis. Here's an example of almost textbook guiding with 20 minute subs. In this case, I had chosen 5 second exposures on the guide star and a 3 second delay between guide exposures. We don't want bouncy guide stars, and 5 seconds smooths out the seeing. An additional delay ensures that I'm only making gradual and occasional bumps to a mount that is already tracking well. We have a nice symmetrical guide star that shows an excellent profile in the 3D graph display with a signal well above the surrounding pixels. The scatter graph shows a little up and down oscillation that is occurring, which is more clearly shown in the y-axis log graph here. This sinusoidal pattern is typical in right ascension and is nothing more than the periodic error of the mount being guided out. The top log shows a consistent push in one direction because of a drift in declination. This is due to a slight polar misalignment. Basically, the auto guiding is doing its job. For best results, guiding corrections should really be small gradual adjustments to the mount. In my settings, I have the minimum movement set to 0.1 arc seconds and the maximum movement to 1 arc second. I'm saying unless it's at least 0.1 arc seconds, don't make a correction, and I'm saying don't move more than one whole arc second at a time. These timid settings keep the guider from trying to move the mount all around chasing the scintillating star due to poor seeing conditions. I'm also dithering between exposures in this example. I've selected a 1 pixel dither in guide camera pixels, and I've set the settle threshold to 0.3 pixels, which for the large scale at which I'm shooting here is sufficient. You can see here the previous exposure has just completed, and the dither operation has begun. The guider sees the dither as 1 pixel error and will attempt to correct this by moving the guide star to its new location. This will take a few exposures in this example because, recall, I told the guide camera not to make corrections exceeding 1 arc seconds. You could spend a lot of time fine-tuning these parameters for your particular mount and optic choices. Remember, I set the settle threshold to 0.3 pixels, so a new exposure will not begin until this criteria is met. I can also introduce an additional delay after the dither if I need to allow for some extra time for settling or tighten up the settling threshold parameter. Some experimentation with your particular system will be necessary to get the optimum results in your environment. As you can see here, in this 20 minute narrowband exposure, I have good round stars with no trailing or elongation. Perfect, just what I want. Now the dither operation has completed, and we begin the next exposure in our series. We are well on our way to a collection of nice clean subs, and hopefully another deep sky masterpiece.